Hi beautiful beloveds, it's me, Serenity, here in nature, nestled with infinity. <laughs> um, I'm just here walking, um, the cemetery is behind me, it's a really big beautiful cemetery, it's like, it's better than, even better than the one that I usually go to, it's closer to my house, it's just so spacious and it just feels like a park it feels like a nature park for all the souls that rest in eternal peace it's pretty it's pretty pretty it's pretty peaceful um but i found a little hiking trail right at the end at the edge of the cemetery so if i sound out of breath i'm sorry but i haven't been as active um, I've been trying to ground my energies a lot and I've been doing that by eating and watching spiritual movies and frankly been a little lazy but I haven't had that much energy it's like I'm being drained like the life force energy is being drained out of me so that my light body can be more activated no I'm really not hip on all the terminology and I don't really cling to strongly to any uh specific terminology or words because words are just words just, and we all just use different words to get similar concepts across so um yeah i just say what i feel and i don't really cling to tightly to anything and i i might even change my mind on the concept the next moment because we're always shifting and evolving and deepening our understanding from moment to moment which is a great thing oh my god that was so beautiful um i've been seeing hummingbirds a lot and two hummingbirds just like swooped right above my head and it was so beautiful i can feel my twin right now and i bet he feels me and that is right on topic today i would like to talk about Twin flame, the lighting's bad. I think I'm gonna walk backwards. About twin flame telepathy. Uh, I've always been intrigued by the notion of telepathy. Um, when I would see it in movies and just any paranormal extrasensory perception, I'm like, if they can do it, I know that I can do that because like, we're all humans here and we all are capable. If one person's capable of doing something, then the whole conscious collective is capable of doing it given the right circumstances and practice determination and wholehearted sincere belief and that's what my twin helped to bring out of me is to ins uh, further instill that belief in the possibility of it um, being true um, ever since I was young I was I think I've been super, I, I'm sure I've been super connected to spirit without even knowing it. I would always be drawn to reading books about ghosts and going to haunted houses and um, all of my family members. I don't remember this because um, when I was a baby, of course, I mean, I, I didn't have that. I don't have that great of memory, so I, I don't remember. But my mom would always tell me that all of my um, older aunts and uncles and late cousins or whatever would say like she's an old soul she's been here before like she's she's been here before and I didn't they recognized that in me and I didn't even recognize it in me because I was so young I don't know what the heck was going on like what's what's this world what's going on where are we like what's happening why are we here <laughs> so young asking why are we here like what anyways um but there was one event that my mom told me um about that kind of stuck with me i made an impression on my soul on a cellular level okay she said one day i got up um i don't know maybe i was three or two i don't know, I don't know age is nothing but a number i don't know probably six hundred thousand eighty four. i don't know like i'm eternal so who knows to be honest but in earthly terms in this incarnation to be precise my mom said that I was probably around between the ages of two and four who knows and she said um, when I got up and I put on my jacket and I was standing at the door and I was like mom 
I need to go see Grandpa. We gotta go. We gotta go to see Grandpa at the cemetery. And she was like, wait, hold on. I didn't say the cemetery. I just said we gotta go see Grandpa. And she was like, you never met your Grandpa. And baby, your Grandpa is passed away. And I was like, okay. That don't mean I, I, don't, I didn't ask all that. I said we gotta go see Grandpa. Okay, let's go, Mom. <laughs> and luckily I have a really um, in tune mom as well and she's just so sweet and so sentimental and so just gentle kind hearted spirit I'm so lucky I'm so lucky to have experienced that kind of love from a mother um, so she ended up taking me and then when I got there she said I um, went next to the grave site and apparently I said something to him and I guess we was talking in spirit I don't know like that's so cool like I wish I remember what the conversation was about, but it was pretty interesting. And there was one more incident prior to my twin where I met this girl at work who was really, really sweet. And she was on a similar path as me when I was on that path of being a social worker and just wanting to serve and help our community and help uplift and heal. Um, but I just didn't fit into that faction because I just felt like a puppet and I, I couldn't really move the strings how I wanted to. And I just, the resonance was completely off, as I've said before in other videos, but yeah. Um, but she was also on the track to get her master's degree, and I had already gotten mine. And I was just, you know, helping to support her, and we were there to uplift each other. And it was so nice to have somebody to relate to at that job. Like, it was such a, um, a release, a relief. Um, so we're always where we're supposed to be at the right time for a given season and reason. So... Never downplay where you are um, at this time. Be humble to even be alive because we are all angels here on a mission, whether we know it or not, um, trying to heal and love on the collective so that we can uplift our vibrations. My arm is starting to hurt. That's why maybe I need to get one of those, I don't know what they're called, uh, selfie sticks. I don't know. I, I don't know. I just, I don't be up with the technology. I don't really be caring like that, but it'd be helpful and convenient to get my message across. So, I don't know. Maybe I should tune in. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I connected with her, and she was telling me about her her stepfather that had passed away, and I just felt deeply connected to that story and to her because I know how much I could tell how much he meant to her. He meant to her, and she meant to him, and. Um, the love from him helped her to go on in life since she didn't have her real father. This lighting is so much better. Um, and, um, so she told me he had passed away or whatever and I would always connect with that story and kind of console her. And um, I don't know, one day, I, 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 out of the blue I was like, I just wanna start going to the cemetery and start walking because like, actually this is why. I, I, would, well, I wanted to go to the park, but there's too many people at the park, and I don't have time to be dealing with everybody's energies when I'm just trying to relax and just be in nature and just be away from everybody. Like, the park is cool, but I don't always like being around people. I'm not interested. Like, it's, and then people want to talk to you and have conversations. I mean, that's cool, but, and then I just feel trapped, but now I have a voice and I know I can say, back, back, like, I'm good, like, I gotta go. You're great, you are a beautiful spirit, but I'm in my own space trying to figure out my own energy at this moment in time so have a beautiful day <laughs> um so so um what was i saying see people be getting me sidetracked and i'd be like why just why are you here but i love people i'm sorry let me stop <laughs> um so yeah that was my reasoning behind going to the cemetery um, and there just happened, still happened to be one by my house. And I was walking around the cemetery, and um, all of a sudden, I was about to leave, but something in my spirit had told me, um, go this way. And I'm like, who is talking to me? Who, who said that? Because I'm ready to go. Like, I'm tired. <laughs> um, I'm like, I, get in, I had enough of the cemetery. I'm cool. But I just I kept listening to the whatever that was speaking to me, spirit guide. I don't know. Um, and I was even walking through sprinklers and stuff like I wasn't paying attention to my surroundings I was just going and then all of a sudden I just stopped and I looked down and it was her father's gravesite and I knew it because they have they have similar features even though that's her stepfather which is weird it's something in the eyes and it said her um, her last name so 
and I just immediately started breaking down and I just cried like in the middle of the cemetery and luckily it was appropriate because at the cemetery people would be hip grieving so otherwise people would be like dang she had a bad day what's wrong with her but it was tears of joy and tears of connectivity to spirit and it was so freaking beautiful I just weeped and weeped and weeped and then um her mom ended up coming to the cemetery and she was looking at the cemetery like what is she doing there like did she have did he have a, a secret lover that i didn't know about um i know that's what she was thinking because she, she was just confused he was like who is that and she was just sitting in her car and i knew it was her even though i never met her i, I was i was I only talked to erica i never talked to um her family so i didn't have any connection to her family until her dad or her connection to her dead father like who does that <laughs> okay so she ended up getting out of the car and i was gonna leave but then that would look too sneaky and obvious so it's like that's the, that's the whole point that it's not that kind of party so no so i stayed and it turns out she only speaks spanish um but for some reason we were there having a 30 minute conversation i don't know how i don't know how <laughs> I don't know Spanish, so hola como estas, muy bien. I don't know, but we had a conversation, and I'm pretty sure Spirit helped me out there because we were connecting with the Heart Center. So that was beautiful. I'm gonna turn around, but the lighting is so bad because because I'm, I'm not used to walking backwards because I like to see what's behind me, but I can't technically because the camera is directing me. Um. So yeah, those are two events, and there was another event with my ex where I channeled his um, uncle who passed away, and I wrote him a letter from his uncle, and um, it actually made him tear up, and he never cried, so I know that I hit a spot, a sweet spot, without even knowing it. Um, but as far as my twin, um, that's when I started having telepathic um, experiences. Um... And I think it was because I, I definitely believed in it and it would be the times when we were not um, in physical contact or um, 3D communication and I would just be missing him like really deeply. But it was only at a time, okay, listen guys, this is the, this is what, these are the tips, the key points to keep in mind if you're trying to open up your telepathic powers. And it's really not about doing anything, like it's, it's really more about feeling into it, deeply believing it and surrendering. Because I would go through these times when he would, we would be in separation, and my mind would just be erratic. I would be in fear. I would be anxious. I would be upset. I'm like, what? What can I do next to get him to remember that we're twins? What can I do next? What? My mind was just all over the place, and it wasn't until until I would kind of accept those emotions, accept the situation, surrender deeply into the moment without trying to surrender, just kind of being there with a clear mind and a completely open heart not expecting not wanting not desiring just being in the now in the present moment and i'm not sure if it's he now this is the first time it happened i went into surgery because i had a kidney stone that wouldn't um come through um and i was deathly afraid i am terrified of going under anesthesia especially after seeing awake what if I would have stayed awake and I was in pain and they didn't know and I was paralyzed? What if I would have died? Like, I probably did die technically and go somewhere else. I don't know where my consciousness was at while I was under anesthesia. That's so interesting. Anyways, though, I really needed him in that moment because um, I had never gone through anything that was um, kind of a near-death experience. And I knew that his love would be the only thing that would help get me through. Even though I had my mom's support, um, my brother, I don't know, it was something about the twin that was really important. Um, but he wasn't available. He was probably talking to the other girls he was dating. I really don't know. That was in the beginning. I'm not sure. Um, but, oh, I can walk forward now. This is cool. But he wasn't there. And then when I got up, I was feeling really disoriented and I had a lot of questions about like where was I, what was happening. And um, I was also like, when is my twin, twin coming back? How am I gonna get him back? I miss him deeply. I want him to come home. And um, I ended up doing a video, because I sent him video clips 
Um, just kind of energy updates. Um, just letting him know that he is thought about, cared about, and loved deeply. I think I'm going to sit because I walked. I did a good job walking. <laughs> good job, girl. You are awesome for staying active. But you got to keep it up because, you know, you be lazy sometimes. Um, so. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I sent him a message and it had been like, I don't know, I don't know, it seemed really long, like maybe three weeks, I'm like a month, are you kidding me? Like, damn, I'm really not a priority, this sucks. <laughs> um, but, uh, after I sent the video, I was like, you know what? Initially I said, you know, I'm done. I'm done. I'm not, I'm not going to be doing this anymore. I'm not going to be talking to him anymore. I can't continue this dynamic we have going on it's, it's too much it's too much and then after that after the it's like stages of grief it's like anger non-acceptance and all of those stages and then um and then I just went into acceptance and I went into just being here now and I just kind of let go and that's when and I opened my heart and that's when I heard clearly so clearly i was laying on the bed and i heard something say i'm sorry i wasn't able to be there with you during your surgery i wish i could have been there to be of more support and um and then i'm always thinking of you or something like that something along those lines and I had stopped checking my um, my Instagram because that's where we would usually talk. But then all of a sudden, I was like, "Just, just check." And guys, 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 that was my first telepathic communication with him. And he said those words verbatim in the freaking message, and I was freaking blown away. At first, at first, I was like. Did that really just happen or did I just make that up? Like what just happened? I, I was confused. And it wasn't until it happened again and then again and then again and then another time uh, I had blocked him and then I came back and he was like, wow, I was just, I was thinking about you recently and I was wondering if you were thinking of me too and these messages just confirmed that it's true. And then another time I blocked him and then I came back and then he was like, um, he was like, this connection always amazes me. And then just recently, um, we started texting again because we're not on the Instagram anymore because we keep blocking each other. So it's like, let's just move on to another form of communication where we can just be closer i'm looking at these two birds flying like hand in hand well they're not holding hands obviously but close enough to be holding hands it's beautiful it's beautiful as heck i could cry so sentimental these moments these moments are so precious um there was another moment where i woke up and i was like man i miss those good morning texts i missed when he would just say good morning beautiful um and then I looked at my phone about an hour later, and it turns out that he sent that as soon as I thought that. Good morning. Beautiful. I'm like, whoa. Whoa. And then it happened again, and then again, and then again. And then the most recent one was um, uh, I told him about uh, the past, some one of our past lives that we shared together. Um, and a possible premonition and then he ended up blocking me and um, for some reason this time I wasn't upset I just I just knew like okay I know I didn't do anything wrong because I'm following spirit and I know that this connection can never be severed um, so I'm not I'm not I'm not worried just like I know when when <laughs> when I would leave and I would block him, he would be like, there she goes again, okay, okay, why? <laughs> but luckily we're not in that space anymore, we, 
have, are learning to communicate with each other to let each other know what we're feeling instead of just leaving because we were hurt and our egos we felt rejected deeply rejected deeply deeply rejected and abandoned deeply abandoned but the reason we felt abandoned is because of this past life connection and it's like we, we I came back here because I, sometimes I want to say we but everybody's perception I mean everybody's um, experiences are different so I came back here and I started to go along the same route of the same pattern that I did a previous lifetime where I would date guys um, here and there and then they would fall in love with me but I would not be in love with them and I would be drawn to them because I know that there's something in them that needs to be uplifted and shape-shifted through the love that I give and um, but then in the end I would never get the love in return at the same level of level of depth um, and then I just felt like I was being used or that I was my love was being stolen from me because it just wasn't balancing out there was no balance and um, I was not in love I, I loved the fact of being able to help and being able to be there for someone and someone kind of caring to caring for me to a certain degree but yeah but um in a past life I was I think there were two scenarios I was with a, a guy and then the same scenario I was with a guy and then I, I realized that this wasn't the love that I this isn't how I needed to be loved and I left them and then they ended up stalking me and killing me they murdered me because it was like if you can't live without you can't live with you can't live without you kind of thing like you're not gonna be with anybody if you're gonna leave me and they killed me um, and it's just weird because I came back just to do that same thing again but it was to do that same thing again and realize what I was doing and check out of that pattern so that I can check into another one um, one that I'm more deserving of it and aligning with knowing that I'm deserving of it even though I went through that traumatic experience and there was another lifetime where I think it was with me and my twin we were together and um, there was a, a past third party situation or maybe a current one I, I, I don't I don't know the timeline um, and then they still wanted to be with him and he chose me but then they ended up killing themselves and I think it may have been unintentionally killing themselves they were just so like out of it and so distraught that it just is it a car accident or uh, and I also think in another life I don't know I have to get more information I, I don't I don't want to I don't want to say too much here I don't want to say too much because I'm not sure but those two I'm pretty sure of because I keep having dreams about it so that's always my confirmation um so in any event, I told my twin about the past life stuff uh, slash possible premonition because we could possibly replay that out in this life and nobody has time for that. Nobody has time for that. Nobody has time for that. Nobody. Because then that means more healing we have to do, more more purging, more waiting, and more separation consciousness. And the separation consciousness is in the moratorium. So, yeah. Um, so anyways, this was the most recent telepathic communication. He blocked me after that. And, um, I just remained open and kept my heart open and just, you know, continued to align with love and align with my soul truth and what I feel to be true inside, irregardless of what's happening in the physical, because there's always stuff under works that we don't really know about and under wraps. And when you and your twin aren't, um, um, your throat chakras aren't open and aligned with one another, you're not able to communicate. Um, your true feelings then things can get misconstrued and it just kind of I don't want to say it waste time because we grow in those moments of separation um, but yeah sometimes it's good to be separated so that you can work out 
work out things and work through things and know what it is that you really want so that when you do um, come back into alignment with each other you won't be like bickering and arguing me and my twin have never argued I don't I'm not an arguer like because at the end of the day I, I get the core of it I get what's really going on and I know that you're in both of our intentions are pure at the end of the day and so um, I think it had been I had even lost count of the days it wasn't that many though it had to be between two and three days where um, he had blocked me and on this day in particular I consciously sent out um, a telepathic vision I don't know if that makes any sense but I was sitting at, down at work in the spa reading synchronicity by Carl Jung and it was just talking about how there was a section just kind of dedicated to belief like if you believe in something enough and you have the underlying feeling behind it that emotion that kind of propels it that emotion that kind of sits in the sub and the unconscious and then it kind of trickles up into the conscious um, it's kind of like through the wormhole of the heart it's like a, a channel that it, it moves through that's invisible but you're connected to it and so it really hit home for me and then all of a sudden I just got kind of woozy in my head and I just closed my eyes usually when I get woozy I'm like oh my god what's going on what is this who is this where's this coming from oh my god is it me is it you <laughs> so then that just messes up it's just like an interference pattern and then nothing happens because I'm just like frantic my anxiety is um infiltrating the the stream of consciousness and then it kind of shuts it off um so I consciously um, sent him a message I just um, I left my body and I just in I left my body I focused on my heart but with my mind envisioned myself leaving my body while also focusing on his eyes because that is the seat of the soul and that's how I remember who he is because it's in his eyes and so that's my like focal point that I can focus on and I traveled through I my body went through his eyes into his body my body merged with his soul and once I felt the merger click I came out of my body out of out of his body <laughs> my body's his body so anyway so I came out of his body and I hovered atop of him while looking him in his eyes and I placed my astral hand my etheric hand my soul hand I don't know onto his heart center and I said awaken your heart beloved and then I kissed him on his forehead and then um I just immediately came back in body and uh, I don't know I just felt so comforted in that moment like it just felt so real it felt so real and then towards the end of the day I was about to post something on Instagram I was gonna put I was about to post something on Instagram about telepathic transmissions and I'm gonna put the picture um, as the main the main thumbnail as the thumbnail on this video it's a, a picture of a man whispering into a woman's ear and it's like he's only his lips are his lips are like molten lava and then when he speaks into her ear her face turns into lava and the hardness kind of cracks off the um the exterior cracks off and then she's half molten half half um rock and um, it's just really, really symbolic because that's what how it feels like when I hear from him. It's like from his higher self. I think that's what it is. I think we're speaking to each other through our higher selves. I think that's what it is. Um, it's just like an, an awakening, instant awakening, instant shot of awakening juice. <laughs> it's not juice. Instant shot of awakening whispers. That sounds cute. Instant shot of awakening whispers. I like that. I like it a lot. Okay. That must have been my higher self because sometimes I'd be like, who said that? I don't know who made that up. That was good. So I was about to post that, and it was basically saying how what I said earlier about how your em how your emotions um, and your affect can kind of shift the the whole stream of consciousness and 
if you feel it deep enough and it's that if it's present in your subconscious enough and it, it's allowed it doesn't have a, a choice but to infiltrate the conscious and come to fruition and come to being and especially if you and your twin are both aligned at the same time it's like you both kind of vanish and disappear into time for a moment because you're thinking about each other and you you have that that focus that channel is open because you're both open to receiving um, and your hearts are both open to feeling and so in that moment you are able to connect seamlessly and so I was right as I was about to post it he texted me and I was just like this is insane because I was I definitely wasn't expecting to hear from him I thought it, I thought it was gonna be like maybe months before we talked because I was saying some serious stuff about um, releasing karmics <laughs> and <laughs> um, and just a shift in um, like our romantic um, dynamics that we have with other and just purifying our love just some really intense like serious stuff like I'm in business about this relationship and I'm, I'm not I'm not kidding around and usually you know that would really scare a guy away especially my twin is kind of young so to be like settling down is something that's I don't know but when you know you know and I don't even know if it's about settling down as much as about just committing to not leaving each other and being open to see where this connection can go I think that's what it really is just committing to the bliss that and the euphoria that that surges through our being when we have these really really special moments together when we feel super connected to the universe um, and our true selves um, it's just an awakening of the true self together and it's just a beautiful experience it's truly beautiful and um, and he actually ended up inviting me to come see him that evening, which I also wasn't expecting because I wasn't expecting to see him anytime soon. It just, I just, I just let it go. I just let it drift from my mind because I just was trying to focus on mission so that I won't be too focused on too focused to the point where I become anxious because that's unhealthy and that's toxic and there's no need to be anxious because if we're aligning with fear we're going to we're going to shudder the connection like it just kind of it causes breaks in the connection like you're not as melded as one when one of you doesn't believe because you are mirroring each other if one of you is not believing the other one is receiving that non-belief and then that doubt just infiltrates the system and then the whole motherboard is crashed because everything's about energy and vibration you have to stay on the wavelength and the vibration to awaken the desires of your heart so that they may manifest in real time and it's important to also stay in the present moment and um, not think too much into the future about what could happen or what should happen you know that the expectations have to drop um, there has to be a deep level of acceptance and surrender and um, I'm not saying once you accept and surrender that that's going to be the only time that you have to do that. I really think it's a, a constant cyclical process that we that we stream through to continue to try to elevate and expand in consciousness and expand in our, our heart center. Make sure our heart consciousness is continuing to elevate. Um, and my twin said something really beautiful um, another time that we were in separation and we we got back in contact and he mentioned that sometimes he doesn't respond sometimes he doesn't respond because he's not able to respond at the caliber of heart that I'm speaking from and um, that speaks a lot to to getting the most out of the experience of each life um, and it's all about the caliber of heart that you put into it aligning with that high caliber so that you can achieve those high caliber facets of life in a spiritual sense and thus when you align with that in the spiritual sense with like spiritual abundance and that you are destined to manifest all the desires of your heart 
then you um, inevitably align with that in the physical and um, and I, I want to say that when you align with love and when you find that love within and with source and um, you find your true self and you're able to find a partner that aligns with the true the true essence of your beingness in totality then I feel like it's almost like an escape route out of the the time loop of reincarnating over and over again because it's like once you align with the true mission both individually and collectively as a twin flame unit I really think that you're able to elevate out of here, out of this simulated matrix, out of this holographic holiverse, into something unfathomable. I'm, I, I'm pretty sure I don't have the words to describe that level of higher consciousness, of, of um, higher dimensions, but I know that love makes me feel safe to continue to elevate into those higher dimensions of experiential existence and I know that it's similar for my twin and I'm sure it's similar for a lot of individuals we're all looking we're all hoping to feel that kind of pure unconditional love because it makes us feel safe enough to be us without judgment and there's going to be judgment from the outside world because not everybody is aligned with your frequency but if you you know have that one person that truly sees you and understands you and wants nothing but the best for you in any form or fashion that might take even if it doesn't include you in that moment it doesn't matter because you're always with them from moment to moment the connection is unseverable you've been with this person for eternity they are your eternity person because they are you. That like blows my mind because I really believe that. And I just feel so blessed that we came so far. And I just feel so blessed because I don't even know how much far we have to go but I know that um, it will be beautifully blissful as long as we just continue to align with the higher heart consciousness and see things from the bigger for the big from the bigger picture I think that all is going to turn out just as it's supposed to, just as it was meant to, just as it was destined to. And so when opportunities of spirit knock that align with your true heart's desires, please say yes to them because they are basically a, an invisible gateway for which you are able to transcend. And if you feel an inkling of being nervous or anxious because a, a nervous kind of anxious bliss because you it, it's so it brings up so much excitement in your heart that it it kind of makes your vibration like a little shivery a little tingly but it's a good shivery tingly you would know the difference there's a difference between anxious fearful tingly and shivery tingly like that tingly butterfly feeling when you're about to see your twin or when you're with your twin it's a good feeling um, know that they are moments of transcendence and they are meant for your highest good um, yeah know that they are meant for your highest good so I'm gonna leave an excerpt um, from the Instagram post I was going to put that I put up about telepathic transmissions in relationship to emotion and the unconscious 
um, and hopefully it resonates with you and is helpful with you building communication with your twin. And I noticed that the more that we confirm our telepathic, um, energetic, vibrational connection, the more that we're able to communicate more clearly in the physical. And so it, it all goes hand in hand, which makes sense. I mean, if you're aligned in that way, you can be aligned in the physical way. It just takes time to get to know each other and understand each other. Mm, I mean, actually, you already know. You already know that fool, okay? You know that fool. You know him. You know her. But it's just finding that balance and um, vocalizing your feelings and not holding back in a good way. In a good way. In a pure, wholesome, and righteous way. Just And I was... If you don't know the words to say to your twin in any moment, just silence your eyes and make your mind extremely still. Focus on your heart and see what comes up from there. And vocalize it, don't think about it, just let it come out. Because when you speak from your heart, no bad can come from that. The heart is omniscient and all-knowing, so 